Hello, this is Baking from Books. This time around, our theme is Be Prepared, because September is National Disaster Readiness Month, and there's a website, ready.gov, which will help you and your family prepare for any kind of disaster that you can think of. It's a great website with a lot of great resources, and our recipe packet this month is a lot thicker because it includes um, advice and tips from ready.com on how to be prepared for disasters. Well, how does that relate to baking from books? We are doing books that are eco-thrillers or disasters or the kind of things that ready.gov helps you prepare for. So our first time around, we're going with an eco-thriller called The Swarm by Frank Schatzing. And it is a long book. Um, can't remember, 800 pages or something. It's huge, but it's really exciting. And I think it was really worth it in the end. Did I buy my own copy just because it was blue and very fat? Yes. But luckily I ended up liking it, so I really do recommend that as an eco-thriller, and it has given us a great recipe to uh, get into this be prepared mindset of September's celebration. So let's get started. Our recipe today is called Agudak. It's a traditional Alaskan native recipe um, because the main character in the swarm, or one of them, that's one of those books with uh, a couple of different stories going on that eventually converge at the end, and which makes it more exciting. But uh, the main, one of the main characters, Leon Anawak, he's from an Alaskan native community and he's struggling to get in touch with his heritage or to feel connected to his heritage. So we've chosen a recipe from his heritage because that's part of his journey in the book and because in the swarm there are sea creatures and animals that rise up and start to kill humans um, who live in the ocean. And if that happened in real life, I think it would want to make, make you want to go vegan or make you think about it. So um, we're choosing this recipe that in, our, in its modern iteration is vegan because it just me needs sugar and Crisco, which yes, I think it's gross, but it works for this recipe and it's better than hunting down seal fat or reindeer fat or whatever they would make it from traditionally, and then water and some berries. And that's really all it takes. Now, uh, <laughs> normally you would do this on a pot on the stove and just stir it forever as you add things in. And it takes a really long time and I got super bored. Uh, but the bigger problem is I can't find my hot plate. It's somewhere. So pretend we're doing this in a pot on the stove and stirring it the whole time the way you would traditionally, okay? Just just pretend because we can't actually do that. We're going to improvise. Um, to be fair, I probably did not do it right when I did it on a pot on the stove. So hopefully it'll go better this time, but no promises. So first thing you do is you take one cup of Crisco, which yes, it's disgusting. And you'd put it in your pot on the stove in little pieces. Am I going to measure it? No. No, I am not. And you would put it on low heat and stir the whole time until it's melted to a liquid. Uh, this part actually did melt to a liquid. You then add the sugar once it's melted, and getting that to melt to a liquid, I didn't have great luck. But um, like I say, we're going to pretend that it's fine. We're going to say that's about a cup. So. If this were in its pot on the stove the way it's supposed to be, you would take your utensil and just stir it and keep stirring it over low heat until this has all melted down to a liquid. Now, make sure if you do this, use a wooden spoon or a metal spoon, not a plastic spoon, because I used a plastic spoon and you'll see when I show you my practice batch, maybe, that uh, I was like, what are these little chunks appearing in it? plastic. It was purple plastic because I was using a purple spoon and just the constant stirring made it melt into my thing. So I cannot share my practice batch with anyone uh, because I melted the spoon to it. So make sure you do not repeat my mistakes and use a wooden or metal spoon. And if you know the correct utensil to be using the, for this, please tell me because apparently I have no instincts in the kitchen whatsoever. What we're going to try and do is melt this in the microwave because I can't find my hot plate. And hopefully that will work fine. We're going to try doing 30 second bursts, which might be too much, but if it is, we'll find out one way or another. All right. First stir. How are we doing? Now this looks absolutely disgusting, of course, and the idea of using animal fats for a dessert is not really typical for the culture I grew up in. But it's really interesting that this developed as a way to keep 
hunters energized and full while they were doing work in like extreme cold. So it's actually very smart to use animal fats that would keep you nourished, but then add in berries and things that make it potentially more appetizing and fun to eat. But I don't know if that's actually why they did. It probably just tasted better that way. Go back in. Ooh, that's a big change. Look at that, it might actually work after all. Improvisation might actually work. All right, so it's almost a liquid, that's very good. I forgot to say that eventually we'll be adding water to it, but you can also use berry juice or snow to make it which is a clear reference to the original context of this recipe, I suppose. Um, I'm just going to use water because we're not actually at the snow point yet, which I'm not ready for snow, so I'm not going to complain about that. All right, we're going to put it in one more time to get it all liquid, and then we'll add the sugar and see how that goes. I seriously doubt that it will melt the way it's supposed to in uh, the microwave, but we will try anyway. Is it with microwaves and yelling? Okay. So we've got our Crisco all melted down into a liquid, so let's add one cup of sugar. And I'm not just gonna eyeball that too, because why not? All right. Put our sugar in there. You're supposed to add it gradually. I didn't do that. But again, you're supposed to be doing this on a pot over the stove, so... So you're stirring this, trying to get it all dissolved and melted into, I'm guessing, one liquid? What I ended up with in my practice batch was a liquid on top and sort of a sugar sludge on the bottom, similar to this. Um, and it was not going so well, the actual melty bit. All right, let's melt this a little bit. Or try. All right, let's see. Give this a stir. Yep, we're getting a real strong sugar sludge. I seriously don't understand this. Should I maybe have done a little research and watched a video of someone making it? Yeah, but oh well. What does melted sugar look like? I don't know. This is very similar to what it looked like on the stove last night. The liquid that you can see sloshing around, and then the sludge in the bottom. And I had it on the stove for a long time, and that never changed. So eventually I just gave up and moved on to the next step. I'm going to do one more round in the microwave, and then I'm probably going to do that again, because I don't have all day to try and figure out what melted sugar looks like. All right, once more, onto the breach. All right, where are we at? Looks about the same, not gonna lie. Yep, sugar sludge in the bottom, liquid on top, and I don't get it. So we're gonna move on. Now, in the recipe, the next thing you do is if you were on the stove, you'd take it off the heat but keep stirring it and you'd add a little water to it, which I will add some water now. It's supposed to be at about a quarter of a cup. And then once it starts changing texture, you add more water to it. Now this is interesting. You're supposed to get fluffy and white as it cools, which is very interesting because, again, I was doing this on a stove and I probably got it too hot because it seemed to take a long time to cool down. And I was stirring, and I was stirring, and nothing was changing, and they got frustrated. So I dumped it all into my KitchenAid mixer and frothed it up that way, and it did eventually change texture. So it does eventually do what it's supposed to do, but it probably just takes a really long time. So we are going to again do what I did last night, only on a lesser scale, because I have here my trusty hand mixer, and we're going to try stirring with that in hopes that it makes the change happen faster. 
might still take a while, but hopefully less than stirring by hand. Alright, let's see where we're at. Now last night, again, I left the room and let it stir in the mixer for a long time. Um, and eventually when I came back it was a lot thicker and white. Now this is fluffy, although I don't know if frothy and fluffy are the same thing. But it doesn't really seem to have thickened a lot. So I'm going to go for a couple more minutes. And then again, I'm just going to call it good. Because the last thing you have to do is fold in the berries and pop it in the fridge and uh, let it firm up. So... Let's see if we can get it any thicker first, though. All right, I'm bored and my arm hurts, so we're gonna call that good. It's pretty fluffy and pretty white, or at least it's frothy and white. Might have thickened up a little bit, probably not a lot. All right, last thing you do is you fold in some mixed berries. Um, I couldn't find a lot of berries when I went to the store. So we're doing blackberries and raspberry and strawberries. I know what berries are. Um, so folding it in, um, where's my shit Schitt's Creek fans at? You just fold it in, you just stir it sort of gently in, drop these in. There might be a moldy one in there. Don't comment. Strawberries I'm gonna cut up a little bit. Raspberries would be good, so would blueberries. Um, couldn't find them. In doing research for this recipe packet, I got to go onto a Reddit Doomsday Preppers group and read their thread of desserts that you can make um, in emergency situations. That was a whole experience. So their insights are in the recipe packet, along with this recipe and other ones that have ingredients that keep for a long time, like the Norwegian recipe is a cookie that's sort of like a gingerbread thing. It keeps for a long time, and the ingredients keep for a long time. We're going to call that folded in, and so then you put it in another container, which I don't have, so we're going to use this as our container, and you pop it in the freezer and let it firm up. Now, the, the uh, recipe is not very clear on how long, um, and then there's this weird thing about wait, let sit for an hour before serving. Do you mean in the freezer, out of the freezer? I don't know. So we're just going to pop this in the freezer and hope for the best. Well, there goes my practice batch. I'll show you that one in a second. Or we would put it in the freezer if there were any room, but there's not. So we're gonna stick it in the fridge uh, while I finish up and show you what the finished product looks like. But it looks kind of like this. It uh, did thaw a little bit and then hopefully refroze mostly. So it looks sort of like ice cream, but we're gonna see if it actually tastes like it. All right, so here is our Aguduck sort of dumpster fire version with, with melted plastic in it. And let's see what it actually tastes like. It scoops out easily, probably because it's partly melted already. Um, mm, I'm stalling. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is my bad version. The other one might come out better. It's interesting. Like, it's a little bit more savory, definitely more savory than American ice cream. But the frozen berries help a lot, and my sugar went absolutely pear-shaped in the practice batch, so there's like sugar crystals in this, and when you get one of those, you get a burst of sweetness. It's actually surprisingly edible, so sweet. I do recommend you try this one. And I do recommend, even though it's a very intimidating book, that you try reading The Swarm also, because it's a really interesting eco-thriller and it's got an interesting message at the end about um, why the sea creatures have risen up to kill mankind. Um, and it's just fascinating and the action is good and there's a lot of characters that you root for. If you don't want to read a book that long, you can also read um, eco-thrillers like Eden and Annihilation, which has a movie that you can also watch, although those are slightly different in terms of messaging. Eden's probably the closest to what The Swarm is trying to tell us. Um, so do try this recipe, do try reading an eco-thriller, and check out ready.com for some really good tips for how to be prepared for different kinds of disasters. And do get one of the recipe packets because it's got a lot of great resources and bonus recipes and all kinds of tips on how to 
prepare for disasters and make interesting desserts that have long shelf lives and it, there's a chart on how long different dessert uh, ingredients last, check out the recipe packet, check out the book, try the recipe, and come back next week when we look at desserts you would make if you were stranded on a desert island and how to survive on a desert island featuring an oldie buddy goodie, Beauty Queens by Libba Bray, very funny book, apparently good as an audiobook as well as a print book, and just a scream of a good time. So come back next week, try these recipes, and happy reading, happy baking. Or melting, as the case may be.